Hi, I'm Joshua Robinson from EIT International. We are the leaders in preventive controls and detection systems. Today, we'll be going through our gap scan unit, our G2 offering that we have available. The G2 unit allows for micro hole detection within plate heat exchanges and other exchanges that you may be using. So here we have the gap scan unit. It's built within a Pelican case. It contains all of the components required to be able to run a test. And there are uh, a variety of different ports and connections on the outside, which we'll be going through, as well as all of the different components within so that you're able to set it up and use it efficiently. So at the back of the unit, we have a handle to release it. You pull the release and you lift it up and you release the handle. To bring it back down, you pull the release and you push it back down. It's got wheels at the base so you can easily move it around. So the first port on the gap scan unit is a USB port. This is used for diagnostics of the system. The second port is the power supply, which is able to power the gap scan unit via the mains. The third is a button which illuminates and flashes when charging and also illuminates when the unit is turned on. And finally, we have the charging port which charges the gap scan unit. So on the right hand side of the unit, we have the inlet and we have the outlet. At the bottom of the unit, we have the drainage system, which allows for the unit to purge any water within the unit. So to open the case, there's one latch on the top, one on the bottom and two on the side, and then you just open it up, revealing all of the contents within. So within the unit, you will have a blue hose, a red hose, the power supply unit, the gap scan charger, the charger for the tablet, a pressure regulator, a pressure gauge, a tablet, and the components to make the clamp. And you'll have two sets of these. So to assemble the clamp, you'll have these pieces. So here you'll have your bolts with a nut and a locking nut, and you'll have two of those. You'll have two clamps, and you'll have your inlet and outlet, which also has a gasket on it, so it allows the water to be held within the system. To assemble it, what you'll first do is you'll take off the locking nut, which is, which is the end of the bolt, off of both of them. You then place the locking nut within the clamp. Making sure that they're both the same way up. You can then identify as to which way it needs to go. And your clamp will then interlock as such. Please make sure that when you are doing it, the two clamps and the locking nuts are overlapping each other. You will then place the bolts through the inlet area and you will place the clamping mechanism over these bolts. You then tighten them down.
and make sure that they sit within the grooves so that they are able to move up and down as such. And then when you want to tighten them, you come back to the other side and you tighten the bolts on this side, making sure that the locking nut stays within. There we go. And there you have your fully assembled clamp. So we'll take your pre-assembled clamp, loosen the nuts at the front, making sure not to unscrew the locking nut at the back. You will then place the clamp over either the inlet or the outlet of your plate heat exchanger, making sure that the hole at the back is lined up with the center of the inlet or outlet. To place it over, hold the top, go over to the back, and then make sure that they're all nice, nicely lined up, and then tighten the nuts at the front at equal tensions. So once you have your clamp installed on the outlet of your plate heat exchanger, you'll want to place the pressure gauge on the um, outlet. And to do that, you'll pull down the NITO, you'll press it in and you'll release. The next step would be to take your blue hose, undo it from itself and place it into the top of the pressure gauge. Now place your second clamp on the remaining inlet or outlet. In this case, it is the inlet of the heat exchanger. Again, remember to loosen the nuts on the front and making sure that the back locking nuts do not come out of their channels. And then tighten the nuts at the front. Take your red hose, which is attached to your water supply, and place it into the inlet of your plate heat exchanger. So before turning on the mains water supply to the inlet, make sure that both of the valves on the outlet are closed. Now the outlet valves have been turned off at the top. We can now turn the water supply on at the mains and we can turn this valve on as well so that we now have water flowing into the plate heat exchanger. So now the mains water supply is turned on and the valve is open on the inlet. We can now open both of the valves at the outlet and this will allow the water to flow through and release any of the air that's within the plate heat exchanger. Now you have a steady water flow coming out of the heat exchanger. You can turn the pressure gauge so that it is closed and the pressure within the heat exchanger will rise. We will wait until this reaches over three bar and then we will turn off the inlet of the water. This will then stop the pressure from rising and then to bring the pressure from three and a half bar down to three bar, we slowly open up the valve, bringing the needle down to three bar. This system is now ready to use and is now pressurized to three bar. So now the system is pressurized to three bar and the valve is off, we can take the red hose off and then we can plug this into the G2. So now we will set up the G2 unit. Uh, first we will plug the regulator into the inlet like so. Once we've plugged in the regulator we will take the blue hose which is now plugged into the mains and plug it into the regulator. Once the blue hose is plugged into the inlet, we'll take the red hose and we'll plug it into the outlet 
of the G2 unit. The G2 unit is now set up and ready to be used and we will now head over to the tablet to set it up. Turn on the tablet and select the AE Easy Testers app. Log in to the tablet using the supplied login details given to you and click register. Then you want to go to setup and you want to turn on the G2 unit. The tablet will then connect to your G2 unit and you will then fill in your job number. Enter the target pressure, which is the pressure that the closed heat exchanger is currently at. Press next, click charge on the tablet, and then click next. So once you follow the connection procedure, you can click next. You then click bleed on the setup page. Once the G2 starts bleeding, make sure that there aren't any air bubbles in the water flow. Attach it to the PHE. So once the G2 unit is connected to the PHE, you will get an option to either bleed or charge. At this point, you charge the unit and follow the instructions as displayed on the tablet and click confirm. The G2 unit will then charge itself to the pressure of the PHE. So once charged, press complete and what you want to do is you want to go and select monitor and then you want the system to go from unstable on the top right and you wait for it to say stable. Once it says stable, you can click test. You can select the duration of the test, which can be between from two minutes and upwards up to five minutes. We suggest doing three minutes and you click start test and the unit will start testing um, and count down from two minutes. So once the test is finished, click save results, generate the reports and select results to see the results of the test. Click end test and follow the instructions on the system. It says to ensure the mains water inlet to the G2 is turned off and the valve between the G2 and the PHE is turned off. Press the purge system and the system will now purge itself, releasing all the water with it. Once the system is purged, you can then go back to the main menu, select upload reports, select upload reports again, select the report you would like to upload, then click upload and this will now be available on the website. You can now go back to the main menu and you can click monitor to restart the whole process and start a new test.